Hello and welcome to Art 34, which is ceramic sculpture with me, your professor for the semester, Mark Lancet. Um, I'm very excited to be working with you this semester. This is one of my favorite topics, both in two ways. I love ceramics. You can kind of get a sense of that from what's behind me. But um, I have been a sculptor since I was 12 years old, which is getting to be a few years now. So I have loved the expression artistically in, in three-dimensional form. And ceramics, clay is one of the most profoundly expressive materials of all the materials I've worked with. And I've worked with an awful lot of them. Clay, I keep returning to again and again. And so I'm really excited to share this adventure with you. Um, we'll be uh, looking at a number of different challenges, a number of different ways of working with the material. Um, we'll be working within a group of really wonderful people. Our, our class will become a clearly identified community of um, artists, and we'll be making all kinds of things. And you'll bring your own interests and your own abilities and your own experience to this. If you have no experience, that's perfectly okay. The good news is that this class requires no uh, background in art at all. And the bad news is you'll never again be able to say you have no experience in art. Um, let me show you a few things. Um, what can art be? I'm just surrounded here. You can't see them yet, but you will in a second by all kinds of interesting things. Uh, so I'm going to start with a heavy one here. This is a beautiful piece. I'll see if I can get back far enough so you can see the whole piece. This is by the phenomenal figurative artist, Lisa Reinertsen. Uh, the bottom is, is, is thrown and glazed, and the top is sculpted directly from the human figure. Um, and this is a, a piece that uh, Lisa made uh, as a maquette for a life-size piece that she eventually created as well. And you can see the hand is, you know, the, the, the glaze is like water, and the hand is kind of reaching into the water. It's a really stunning piece that I'm proud to live with. Um, so that is one example of uh, ceramic sculpture. It can be so many different things. So that's a figurative piece. Here's an abstract piece. And this is by the amazing Kat Cox. That's her name. She was our lab tech for a while. She taught classes with us for a while. And now she's a full-time professor somewhere out in the United States. I think it might be Kansas somewhere out there. Anyway, she's teaching, uh, she's a professor in ceramic art at another university now. And this is a piece that she made. Um, and you can see her aesthetic is quite different. It's very abstract. And it trades in bright colors, uh, multicolored surfaces, uh, multi-textured surfaces, and delicacy. Every little detail is, is seen to so that the, the transitions are perfect from one form to another. And it's just a lovely little, amazing little inexplicable piece. Almost looks like maybe something you might see in a tide pool, but, um, but it really is just to be appreciated. You can really appreciate it for the elegant, subtle piece. And this is kind of related. This is a slightly larger than, but might be something very similar to, say, a maquette you might make for a piece you're considering. So we'll talk a lot about maquettes. As long as we're talking about maquettes, let's take a look at another small piece here. This is a little piece here, and it actually looks quite tall here, um, because I took the, the piece at the top is a ceramic piece, and I took it and I added, um, all kinds of assemblage type materials uh, to it. But when you get up real close, what you see, let's see if it'll focus on that, is a hand with a head. And a friend of mine, Dick Notkin, um, who is an amazing uh, internationally renowned sculptor, um, he does a workshop where um, he will give you a cubic inch of clay and then he'll give you a designated amount of time, uh, anywhere from four hours to four days. This is a piece I made in the four hour approach. So um, I sculpted a little hand holding a little head and then I held on to that for a long time and only recently uh, added these elements to it. And now it sits on this little tower. And so that's a little, uh, again, it's small, it's detailed, it's elegant. 
um, and in some ways and kind of crude in others, but it is a, um, an example that what we can do with ceramics is, and with, with sculpting is we can focus and, and that's what Dick Notkin is all about. He gives you these four hours and this one cubic inch of clay and the challenge is what is it you can do? What is it you can make? What can you pull off in the time allotted? And he's very clear, um, there's no music, uh, there's no uh, music being played in the whole space, and there's no uh, earbuds, or you can't listen. You just focus on the clay, and uh, the the range of things that people made was quite astonishing. So let me show you something of, of uh, Dick's here. I've got a little piece of his somewhere here. Just so you get a sense of his, um, he, if you look up Richard Notkin, N-O-T-K-I-N online, you will see an amazing range of pieces. You can also see his work at any museum. The Crocker Museum has quite a few pieces of his. This is a little three inch by three inch tile and you can see how detailed it is. It's, um, it's a portrayal of a little section of Picasso's painting Guernica. And you can see it's quite precise. And uh, Dick makes these tiles um, that then become um, parts of much larger pieces. He has a, a, an enormous portrait of George W. Bush made with lots of three inch tiles like this one. Here you can see um, he has created, I don't know if that focus there. Yeah, you can see it there. Um, this is uh, human remains in, in rubble after a war. This is, might be an image you could see in the Ukraine, uh, sadly, uh, right now. But throughout our history on this planet, we have uh, tormented one another. And uh, Dick is, is an artist who expresses the pathos of, of war, much like uh, before him, Goya. He's a, he reminds me very much of the artist Goya. And he does it all in clay. This is a three inch square and the precision of his work is breathtaking. So um, now here's another little delicate piece. And all of these smaller scale are kind of interesting to start with. Um, this is a little, um, I, this one just fits really comfortably in my hands. It's a, just a little bird form. It was made by an artist that I met um, and worked with in, uh, in Denmark, though uh, not in Denmark, in, in Port Portugal. She comes from Sweden and uh, this is her. Uh, she makes these lovely little birds that um, I was fortunate enough to uh, to acquire one, um, and it's it's just a lovely little little um, image. Uh, again, kind of a gestural piece, kind of a, a, a little bit small. And we're going to start out with some small maquettes, and then we'll get into larger pieces. Here's a piece that was a maquette for a former student of mine and a great artist named Katrina Van Maal. Uh, this piece is called Grandma Making Mojo. And she eventually did make this piece about uh, two and a half feet tall. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of patterning on the piece as well. Uh, you can see uh, a great piece of uh, Katrina's down at the Benicia Library. They, they have a beautifully dedicated place where one of her pieces, um, uh, quite a remarkable involved piece is on display there. So that's that's an example. Um, there's just so many different directions to go. That piece, Grandma Making Mojo, was done with coil building. Uh, Lisa's figure was done almost working solid, as was the Swedish bird piece. Uh, Richard Notkin works um, with layers of clay and then mold making. Uh, this is um, a wonderful artist from Denmark, a dear friend um, named Nina Ole. And uh, she displays it this way, though you can see it actually does look to be three kind of uh, jumbled houses. Uh, but uh, when she displays it, she displays it uh, this way, um, upside down, or I don't know, right side up, I would imagine Nina would say. But this beautiful um, house sculpture form uh, is hers and uh, was a gift to me, which I'm really appreciative of. Um, so there's so many different ways to go with sculpture. And I'm showing you just a little narrow kind of window of things because um, I 
I have some very large scale pieces outside I could show you, you know, nine foot tall pieces, but we'd have to go outside and it's wet and it's raining. Don't want to do that. Here's another piece that's of interest. Uh, this piece is called uh, Smart Bomb NB. And it has a couple of uh, interesting, it I made this during the Bush administration, the George W. Bush, baby Bush administration. And uh, it, it struck me that he was overly violent and, and uh, very casual in his deployment of troops and weapons to kill people. So um, I made this, this homage to uh, men trying to prove something with, uh, with kind of military prowess. Um, and the interesting thing about this piece is it's 100% thrown on the wheel. Everything you're seeing here is made uh, on the wheel. And I will show you how to do that. If you're interested, please ask me about that. So I'm just trying to give you a taste. We're going to be involved in a number of different uh, projects. Uh, we're going to look at um, thinking about architecture and uh, creating architectural forms that have some sort of emotive quality. We're gonna be uh, making uh, pieces, we're gonna learn how to make two piece molds and then use a mold to try and work on a series or a repetition of a form or even an evolving form. You push the same piece out of a mold and you change it progress progressively more. That's, these are assignments that are coming up in the class and you may have your own ideas that you wish to pursue. What I think all of this is to say is that I feel very fortunate to work with you. I find great joy in our mutual engagement in the creative activity of expressing ourselves through ceramic sculpture. And I couldn't be more fortunate than to be working with you. So we're gonna have a great time together and I look forward to meeting you and working with you. Stay safe, make lots of art.